Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be going from our attack function, so instead of attacking from our player's head out to the like pretty much whichever direction we're looking but from our player's head we're going to change it to go from the weapon's muzzle to pretty much wherever the, the firearm's actually pointing if that makes sense. I think you know what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to change up our fire function it is going to perform a line trace with all the information that it needs from we're going to have to create a socket on the weapon of course where the muzzle is and then it's going to return a hit result instead of just being void so that hit result is then going to be passed from our client to our server and then the server is going to essentially do kind of the same thing but we're going to do checks in the future because obviously going from the client to the server when it comes down to shooting it is going to be very easily exploitable so the client already has the ability to aimbot and that sort of thing but we want to restrict the ability to shoot you know through buildings and all that kind of stuff so to make it feel very snappy so for example if we just went from the client we called a function on the server saying we want to attack we don't actually do anything on the client other than that the server then does all the work well that's going to feel very laggy and sluggish on the client that's actually doing the shooting for clients that are watching the player that doesn't matter as much because it's going to be relatively quick within a couple hundred milliseconds most likely so what we want to do is to make it feel very snappy and fast we want to have the client do the shooting all the effects and stuff are going to be played on the client doing the shooting just right as he presses the trigger and then after that's done we're going to make our server call and then the server is going to do everything that it should do such as applying damage to the player and all that kind of thing as well as because we're going from we're passing in the hit result and using that for the server line trace and the server checking what we're going to do is check if okay we're going to create a line trace from the start and finish well from the uh, player's actual starting point to the end point and if anything is blocking it such as a building it's going to be an invalid line trace so that way we're not spoofing the start location of the line trace if that makes sense All right, so can actually just get started on that I'm going to comment out everything in our client attack function and set up our fire function to return a F hit result. Okay. For now, then we need to include our line trace component. header and this is going to be what we use for all this kind of stuff and then use create default subject and our constructor just like so and then include it so it should be line trace dot h we really need to work on our rename a couple of our classes because this is just kind of bad alright so we are good to go there now we need to create a socket on the muzzle so we're gonna go to our FPS weapon bundle weapons meshes and we're using the AR4 just open up its skeleton and then on the left side click on the muzzle bone right click add socket and we're going to call this s underscore muzzle now you can see it's kind of a little off angle so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees like so so it's pointing directly out and now we can perform our line trace so I'm just going to do this after the animation it's called effector start location equals our mesh component 
socket socket location and it was s underscore muzzle and we're going to do the exact same thing for the rotation and do get socket rotation now for the final effector it's going to be our end location and that's simply going to be start location plus rotation dot vector then we want to multiply it by the distance we want to go out so I'm just going to do 1500 units like we did before so that's like 1500 centimeters or something like that and then we can perform our line trace so our line trace actually returns an F hit result so we can just do that directly so line trace component line trace single then start location and location and I want to see the uh, debug line so we're gonna pass in true so now we call this we're gonna do F hit result and set that equal to our fire. So I'm going to go ahead and build and test real quick. Pretty much all we're storing the hit result in. Result 4 is to pass into the server. So the server is going to kind of do the same thing again, but we can do an authority check to run certain things on the client and certain things on the server. Alrighty, pick up weapon, click, and you can see it's going from our socket. So that's good. Now we can find our server attack, and I'm going to rename it to server underscore attack. So our naming is much more appropriate. And I don't think there was anything else that called it, so that should be fine. And we're going to make it take an F hit result. So F hit result. Hit result. then call server underscore attack pass in hit result so we can actually skip this step and just call our weapon fire function as the parameter and we are good to go there so we can comment out all of this stuff as well And now pretty much do, well, whatever we want. So let's think about this for a second. First thing, I've, we're not going to be doing any like security checking or anything like that to prevent cheating on this video. That'll probably be in the next one. But we want to have certain things, so we can pretty much recall our fire function. So if roll is less than, oh wait, we have to do get owner. Wait, no, duh. Roll is less than roll authority. I was thinking this was a component for some reason. We're going to do all this. Otherwise, we're just going to return a new line trick or a new hit result. So just call it the constructor of the hit result, and it's fine. Okay, so on the client, we're performing the line trace, and we're playing the animation. So that'll be instant the second we pull the trigger. Uh, that'll be where we do our effects, too, So such as a muzzle flash and a, let's say we shoot a, I don't know, a steel wall. Make like a little spark or something like that in the future, or a blood splatter on the person we shot which will eventually be, we're going to store this, actually yeah. So because we're going to end up doing all that, 
we can store that our hit result in actual variable. So f hit result. We're going to store it so that way we can get the impact location and that sort of thing. Neaten this up. Alright, we are pretty much good to go there. So, otherwise... So, otherwise we're on the server. Eh, hmm, I'm not 100 sure on how the roles would work in that case. So in this case I'm going to do an else if role equals role authority. Actually, no. Because that would be, I don't think anything can be greater than the role authority, so that should be fine. Alright, so now the server is going to essentially do the same kind of dealio. Can make. Okay, this taking an F hit result as well. Server hit result. This probably wouldn't be a bad idea to overload the function. So let's do that. Call it server hit result. Create the definition. Alright. And from here, we pretty much only want it to run on the server. So if role equals role authority, then we want all our stuff to run. So here's where we can do our check. So we go from the client attack to the server. From here, we can do weapon fire and do the one that takes in our hit result so hit result and here's where we can do our sort of check so for now we're just going to simply do if a actor hit actor equals server hit result get get actor so I'm doing this a little backwards yeah because it'll be cleaner to have it on yeah we'll deal with that later the naming scheme that should be fine so we did in fact hit an actor we can do a cast to our survival character, so let's go ahead and include that. Survival character dot h, and if a survival character, I think my s key is going out. Player equals cast a survival character, being the template type or the type for the template, and hit actor. So from here we can do our damage. So I'm just going to be lazy and copy what we currently have for our take damage function. Except change get controller to a null pointer since that simply doesn't matter for us. And this, change it to get owner for the uh, hit actor. Because if you recall in our server interaction here, we set our owner to the character that uh, that has picked up the weapon. Alright. So that should work. I am calling it, right? Yes. Actually, we don't really need this either anymore since we overloaded the function. Let's check. Alright, 30, 10. Alright, so he is in fact taking damage from the weapon. So 
so that's good news. And we are now going off of our weapons muzzle socket. So let's... Eh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm probably going to end up going through and cleaning this up anyways, because we're going to really be expanding on this to make uh, different functions for both the checking and effects. So because there is a chance of a fair amount of lag going on, I don't want to have our checking be done in our validate, because if, let's say, the player that's trying to do the shooting does in fact lag or he stutters, so on his view, he is beside the building and shooting at a player, whereas on the server he might still be behind the building. We don't want that to be the reason that he gets immediately disconnected from the server. We want him to still, you know, be able to actually play and not just be have his game ruined because of a little bit of lag or bad internet connection or something like that. So instead, that's the main reason I'm moving all of this over to our weapon base class. We're going to have a function that's going to be multicasted for an effect, such as the sound, as well as the, um, such as like a blood splatter for impact and that kind of thing. Same thing with muzzle flash. So ultimately, where we have our play animation, that's going to be in a multicasted function that's going to be just like this. We're going to just simply do a check to make sure it's not like a locally owned client. And it'll play the animation, the muzzle flash, the sound, all that kind of thing. So let's reiterate what we've done real quick. So on the client, all we simply do is call a server function, which passes in as a parameter our fire function that returns our f hit result and our f hit result is a simple line trace from our muzzle our socket location on the muzzle out to 1500 centimeters then we, on the server we do the exact same thing again we call a weapon fire but we pass in the hit result and this is going to be our server function so if you see here it's the reason we called it server hit result just so we know that it's for the server. We double check, make sure we're in fact the server. And if we hit anything, we will simply check if it's a player that's hit and call our take damage function just like normal. So ultimately, what we can do is if an actor is hit, which that could be like a tree or really anything, uh, so you probably don't necessarily need to do that. But outside of it, like here for example, we would multicast the effects and just that kind of thing. So this was relatively simple and now we've started actually moving on to making our weapons functional finally. So I think we'll probably do this security checking in the next video. I don't know. We'll just kind of see when we get there. But I will see you then.